Do the Amish wear bathing suits? This is a great question. I know that the Amish are very modest. How does that affect them with their swimming? And it, if they do swim, where do they swim? And do they swim in public? Maybe it's just in private. So we're going to answer all those questions, but I thought it would be fun to go back and look at the history of the bathing suit. While we look at the Amish and we think they're so modest and what did the, you know, where did this come from? Some people say, oh, it's a cult, but think about it. Our entire culture practiced modesty. You can go back a couple hundred years and we were all on the same page. So what developed? What, what did bathing suits look like back in the 18th century? And we'll look at the history of where it is now. And then I'll answer the questions about the Amish. I don't have exact dates when certain things were developed, so I kind of went by century. So let's look at the 18th century. Here you can see a picture of a woman's bathing suit. And oh my goodness, it looks so cumbersome, doesn't it? But back then... Up until about this time when this bathing suit came out, swimming wasn't really an activity per se. Um, somebody decided, well, it wasn't per se a recreational activity. It was believed that there were considerable health benefits to bathing in the sea. And this is what encouraged women and men both to start swimming. So it was more for the health benefits. Immersing oneself completely, though, was d discouraged. This was deemed particularly important for women as activity in water was not seen as really feminine. But bathing, the women would wear loose open gowns that were similar to this one that you see here. Now, what's interesting, you and I look at this and say, well, you're gonna get in the water and that thing's gonna float up around your neck. Well, they've solved that problem. They put little pieces of lead into the hem of the bathing suit and that would keep it weighted down. Now let's, let's look into the 19th century, which is the 1800s. A lot of changes took place as with everything else in our culture during the 1800s. The popularity to go swimming just for health benefits turned into more of a recreational thing. So more people wanted to go to swim for the, you know, the water activities. However, women still had to maintain their modesty. So here they are wanting to swim, wanting to have fun, but the suit that they had to wear was very cumbersome. It was a dress, drawers, and stockings. And a lot of times they were made out of wool or cotton. So they would become really heavy and wet and women really weren't able to get in the water and, and swim and move around like we do today. During the 1800s, there was a period called the Victorian period. And this period was known for its really strict moral values. It's the, of course, modesty would be right up there with everything else. Women would use these bathing machines or called cabanas. I've seen it called both, as you can see in this picture. So when getting in and out of the sea, the women, they would take that bathing machine and it would be draw, drawn into the ocean or the sea with horses. And then the women could change their clothes inside that cabana or that machine and then come out that door, as you see in the picture. When they were finished swimming, they would go back into the cabana or the bathing machine and then take off with the horse and, and buggy or machine. Now, near the end of the century, up in the 1880s, women still had dresses, bathing dresses, like you can see here, but they started to have a little bit more style and they were high neck, long sleeves. They still had to wear their bloomers underneath for modesty, but you can see that it has more fashion than it did before. Again, they're still made out of linen and wool and women are still cumbersome in the water. Later, at the end of the Victorian era, the swimsuit changed into a one-piece suit, as you can see here. It was called the princess suit. So this is the start of more of a body suit as opposed to a dress that women were allowed to wear, and it was acceptable for them to wear. Very close to the 1900s and the end of the 1800s, this suit, they started to shorten the length of the bottom of that one-piece suit, and the material was no longer as cumbersome. They started using things like cotton um, instead of flannel, and then it would be more freeing to be able to swim. Now we're going to go into the 1900s, 1900 to 1945. Things were changing up until this point, but one of the big catalysts that happened, or 1900s, was uh, a woman named Annette Kellerman. She swam in the Olympics. And at first they wanted her to wear a modest suit. And she said, I can't swim in, in what you're requiring me to wear. I have to have freedom while I'm swimming. And so it, she was she actually swam in the Olympics in 1912. So what she did, you can see this picture here, they didn't want her to show her legs. So what she did is she sewed tight stockings to her swimsuit. So it almost looks like a big bodysuit, but at least she had freedom of movement. Later, she went to swim in Boston and the authorities there said her bathing suit was indecent. So it actually went to court and the judge overruled. They said she 
is allowed to wear something that will help her to swim and not feel like everything was so um, cumbersome. And I'll just show you some different pictures here that different companies started to experiment with. It was uh, Janssen and Speedo. They both developed a swimsuit that was one piece. And this is where things just started to take off. And this is again in the early 1900s. I had to show you this one here from 1937. Now it looks like it's a little bit more um, unmodest compared to the other ones. But the interesting thing about this suit, while they were allowing women to show their legs and show their arms, this suit still had heavy material. And what happened was the women would get wet and the material would just hang on them. So it actually was counterintuitive to what they were trying to achieve by being modest. So at this point, the material started to change as well. So now let's get back to our original question. What do the Amish wear? Do they swim in public and where do they swim? So what they wear, they are modest. So you might go all the way back to where they were wearing the long dress. The women wear, the men tend to wear like a button up shirt and a pair of trousers. They don't tend to swim as much as they tend to wade into the water just to be refreshed. We always talk about the different orders, different rules. And I like to keep emphasizing that because then you have groups that won't swim at all. They feel like it's very, very immodest and they won't do it. And then others will go to the beach and go out in public and swim. And some groups will only swim maybe in a pond that's local. Now, what about the children? Children are allowed in many groups to wear their swimsuits and they get to just like our children, except modest ones, of course, and they get to swim and play until they hit their teens and then they are required to be more modest. So they do, Amish do wear swimsuits, depending on the group that they're in and the, and the rules, but they always maintain modesty regardless of where they swim. They always make sure they're modest. They're all pretty um, even on that one note throughout the sex.